Okay, we're with uh, Ken Moncow, Chelsea Player of the Year in the early 90s, and we're going to ask Ken a few questions about Chelsea and their prospects for this forthcoming season. Okay, Ken, I just want to ask you about uh, Chelsea and uh, what you think of our pre-season form, given we've lost four in a row. Yes, of course. <laughs> for lots of people, will be quite a big shock for the, like, the double winners from last season to have a start as they have. But uh, it's one of those, after the back of the World Cup and lots of players coming back, Still got uh, quite a few uh, games in the legs, you know. The last time, of course, uh, that they really sort of in, in the way with these people sort of start criticizing and thinking, hold on, what's going on? This is the sign of the, the, the season to, to, to come. I think the boys had a very, very long season last year, the World Cup and the back of that. Uh, and this is actually a matter of just getting games under your belt and preparing yourself when next week comes, when you're ready for the competition. That's all that matters in a way. Do you think as an ex-professional, if you had the pre-season that we've had, we've lost four in a row to teams like Frankfurt, we've just lost to um, Man United in the uh, Charity Shield, would you be concerned as a centre-back for Chelsea now if you're in the team, or do you just think it's a, more a matter of getting match fit at this point? And that's what it is, because if I'm the centre-half like that, I would have just come back from the, from the World Cup, you know, after a double-winning season as well, so I had quite a few le uh, games in my legs, so... Uh, what I need to do is, like I said, to being the right friend of mine, uh, just to sort of defining, to fine tuning and getting ready, you know, for the, for the season because the season ahead, of course, is the top one. And these games, you have to get games on the rebuild in the way. Of course, the people look at the result, being big Chelsea, and we're playing against Frankfurt, playing against Ajax. But when we played against Ajax, these guys were three, four weeks ahead of us as well, you know. It's just a matter of getting the games. But when it really matters, I think uh, Chelsea will uh, give a good account of themselves. What do you think about our pre-season signings? Are you surprised we haven't bought any more? Or do you think that it's just a question of adding one or two players to our squad? I think I said, this is the finish yet, but it hasn't closed yet the market, you know, so there's still so a few weeks uh, to go. Uh, but I think there's a few players at the end of last season that weren't there that are suddenly now in the squad. So we've got a couple of players back as well from injury in a way. And I think when you look at the squad, I think we've got a strong enough squad in a way, you know? Now I'm going to put you on the, the spot here, Ken, about uh, Joe Cole and Yossi Ben Ayoun. Essentially, we've done a straight swap with Liverpool, except we've had to pay five million. They've paid nothing, and their players two years younger. What do you feel about um, about Yossi and Joe Cole, and what, what are your views on that whole transfer? Personally, Yossi, I don't know that much about it from seeing him play, and I think he's a wonderful player to watch. But personally, I'm a Joe Cole fan. I was surprised that he left the way he did, in a way, you know, on, on the free. Uh, and I rate him, uh, and I still rate him as one of the, the, the best uh, players, you know, in his position. So, taken from that, do you think that the Liverpool have probably got the best deal there, or do you think it's just a matter of waiting to see how the season unfolds? It's waiting to see unfold, but personally, if you, you ask me the question personally, I like Joe Cole, because I know Joe Cole better than I know Ben Ayou. So, Ben Ayou, you still have to wait and see what happens. But, it's a collective thing. You see, you're talking about one player, so, and he's part of the squad. So, and that's what he will decide himself when and where he will use them in a way, you see, and come at the end of the season where we maybe have this conversation again, and we start talking about, uh, yes, how we uh, still there in the title, we won the, we won the title, we still maybe to the double, then nobody will complain about the start of the season we had, the players that we bought or didn't buy, you know, it's all about in the pudding once the season starts, the real business end. What do you feel about the, um, the, the new focus on youth? Up to um, this point, we, we, we've hardly had any youth players coming through, really. I mean, John Terry's a, an exception, but that was uh, 12 years ago. You can see by what the, um, the manager and the, uh, the, the staff are saying about this forthcoming season, where more and more youngsters are going to be used, but that's more of a risk. What's your feeling about our youth strategy and some of the players coming through? I think there's, there's a good prospect there. Like I said, uh, I've seen quite a few players last season. Of course, they won the FA Cup uh, Youth uh, Cup, and you saw three or four of them that already played in the first team, so they got the experience of it. And I think it's a good way going forward to get these youngsters involved in a way. But it's a long-term plan. And of course, at the club at Chelsea, it's about, of course, instant result as well. But you've got to have a, a plan. And I think, uh, come sort of two, three years further down the line, we will have to find a few youngsters coming through. And what do you feel about um, some of those youngsters? Are there any that um, have stood out for you over the last uh, last season? Of course, I personally would be very biased because I would look at the centre half position. You could look at Jeffrey Barmer. He's Dutch. Uh, like I said, uh, he's very uh, mature for his age because he's only 18, 19. And like I said, the way he plays, the way he comes across, you know, I think he's a good prospect, you know. 
What's, um, what's the feeling about Jeffrey in Holland? Or is there not much focus on him at all? Oh, no, of course, because like I said, he's, he's, he's been, he had a taste of the, the national side in a way, so they're definitely pushing play for a big Chelsea, so people are aware of it. But like I said, but I think by him sort of this season getting more sort of opportunities to play, and especially with the guys that because it's going to be a normal season again, just so and people that played the World Cup, of course you've got the JT being fit again, you've got the Cavalli coming back, but then still we're still waiting for Alex. So I think it's a great opportunity for him to, to get a few games on his belt, you know? And the only way to test his youngster is by playing him. What are your thoughts regarding our current team? I mean, there are plenty of fans on our bulletin boards who are saying that really we're getting a bit old as a team now, and maybe it's needing to, to be refreshed if you look at Lampard and Dropper, 32, 33, etc. World-class players, but obviously getting on. Do you think now we've got the stamina to get through a whole season, or do you think we'll be caught out? You don't know until we start playing, because last year, like I said, these old boys, in a way, they managed to get the double, while people criticised them, and like I said, the, and we were there ourselves when they, when, we were, when they were out of form. We thought, hold on, are these guys maybe past it or not? You know, you, there were question marks in way, but they proved everyone wrong, you know? And what do you think about our strengths and weaknesses? If you're the manager of the team now, is there any part of the team that you would like us to improve on, or are there any that you think, you know, we're world class in that um, position? I think we've got a good enough squad, but of course, but it's all about, like I said, the course of the season, because like I said, it all depends, of course, how we start, the middle of the season, how we finish, you know, it's a long, it's a long season, but when you look at the squad, I think we've got a good enough squad to compete with all the boys there now, you know? Yeah, okay, great. And then, uh, Ken, before you go, I've got to ask you about the World Cup, obviously, uh, your Dutch and the, uh, the Dutch team got to the uh, final, and one of our ex-players was uh, Arjen Robin was through one-on-one -on -one with the uh, Spanish goalkeeper and put that through. He might have won the World Cup for you. What's the feeling in Holland about the World Cup and uh, your team's performance? Uh, in one, on one hand, they were very, so I said, very pleased for them because they reached uh, the, the final of the World Cup. You know, and it's been a long, long time that uh, a Dutch side managed to, to get as far as they did. Uh, yes, questionable the, the way they went about their business in a way. They were very sort of uh, business-like because they didn't play the fluent Dutch uh, style that people are accustomed to. But their plan worked right up to the final in a way. And then I think because I think personally, in my opinion, I think they were a little bit scared of the Spanish. And that's why they applied different tactics where they thought physically to, uh, to uh, sort of intimidate them. But it, that, that plan didn't work out. And I thought personally, being Dutch as well, that the right team won. Yeah, I mean, how did it go down? Because, um, you know, up to the last 30 years, you've been renowned, really, for that, that Cruyff sort of total football. And um, seeing some of uh, Van Bommel's ta tackles, you'd have thought that suddenly we'd, you've changed completely. What, um, what was the feeling in Holland about your style? Uh, no, because in Holland, like I said, the, the, the real football uh, sort of uh, professors, are, as I call them, were disappointed, the way we applied to our tactics, in a way. But as a general feeling, they were very pleased that the Dutch side reached the final in a way. Because if you look at them, yes, good players, but if you go back down a few generations, they weren't the year of the 90s, the Gullet, the, uh, the, 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 the Van Basten, they weren't, of course, the Kroos and the Van Hanegem and these kind of guys. But they still achieved, you know, to be in the final and had the chance of winning as well. Okay, Ken, finally, I just want to ask you what personally you're up to uh, these days. What can you tell us about uh, what you're doing with your life now post football? Uh, doing a bit of work for Chelsea. I work at also in the middle of the country, organising events, sporting events. And uh, we are uh, hopefully at the end of this year uh, going to bring out a, uh, a sports magazine. And uh, what sort of events are these? Are these corporate or are these people that general public can uh, fit into? No, these are corporate uh, events that we organise, uh, ex-players events with the corporate. Uh, and they're, they're, they're quite a, a good sort of vehicle for the, for the players to be involved, especially as players, and for the businesses, of course, to get close to these players. And there's still life in, in the old dog, so to speak, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, there's some of this a whole new world opens up because some of these guys that finished three, four years ago or even longer are some of the very marketable series. Eh? Okay, Ken, well, look, thanks very much for talking to CFCNet, and uh, let's hope we have a great season. Thanks very much. Thank you. That's Ken Monkow.